Well, I would say that it's our major problem with young people. I think it's going to get a lot... Nearly 50 years ago, this man, the Reverend Ted Knoffs, began the Wayside Chapel in King's Cross. He was one of the first people in Australia to give a voice to young people and those on the fringes of society. At the same time, even though he was a Methodist minister, he began to challenge the fundamental nature of organised religion in Australia. 70% of our people in Australia have given organised religion away. And when I hear that, I shout hallelujah. You are your own Pope now. You are your own President of the Conference. You are your own Moderator of the Assembly. The authorities that have once stood the test of time no longer apply. Now authority is with the individual, just as with it as it was with Jesus. At a time when authority everywhere was being questioned, Tednoff's opened the Wayside Chapel in 1964. It was in the heart of the red light district in King's Cross. It was nothing special to look at, just a couple of blocks of flats that the church had converted into a place of worship. But the Wayside Chapel was a lot more than a church. A lot more. This was an era when the post-war baby boomers were growing up into teenagers. In fact, the whole idea of teenagers really only began in the 1960s. Grandpa Ted saw that they had nowhere to go, so he opened up the Wayside Chapel to them there was nothing quite like it. My dad remembers it well. During the 60s, we also used to have, during the weekend, we used to have the movie show and a disco. So it was always full of young people everywhere crowded there. Usually, I was much younger than the young people that was there. But it was always something happening there. It was just a fantastic uh, place to, to be. I reckon. Why do you come to Whiteside Chapel? I don't know. Come up to hear the music. The Wayside had a dance hall, a coffee shop, and where could you get good coffee in Sydney in that era? A space to hang out. And there was also a theatre. The Wayside's work extended beyond the bounds of the chapel itself and onto the streets. Mr Tweedy? They had volunteers who did what they could for the needy but there was an awful lot of poor people in Sydney back then. How are you? How are you? I haven't seen you for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> We went down to Willamaloo and gave out food packages to people who were in the homes down there. You know, I just still, to this day, uh, could not believe the poverty that existed so close to the centre of Sydney. And, you know, it has improved, um, but some things haven't, you know. Uh, there's so much still to be done. The Wayside attracted its fair share of dropouts and no-hopers and drug addicts. In other words, it's not a... Drugs were becoming steadily more widespread, although most of Australia, including politicians, refused to even acknowledge that there was a problem. Recently, in, in one of our staff members, in a, a meeting with young people 12 and 13 years of age, found that uh, of these young people, 50% had, in fact, been involved in some way with people uh, offering them drugs. So it's a pretty sizable problem, and one where I believe we need some kind of action on the part of people working with young people, certainly in the high school, certainly in the primary school. I believe that the problem is a very serious one indeed. Ted had to work out his own response from scratch. There were no counsellors in those days. Thanks for coming down from upstairs. Yes. Well, I was just a bit concerned about the baby, and uh, you, you've been involved with drugs, have you? Oh, yes. Yes, but when you were on your own, there may have been some reason why you could have uh, experimented or been involved with drugs, but if you both got high one night... Oh, no, we arrange things such that the baby isn't... Um, adversely affected, you know, by what we do, as far as drugs are concerned. Grandpa Ted had been shocked into action the first time he came across a young person who'd overdosed. 
It was very, very early in the 60s, and it was really accidental. Dad walked into the chapel and found a young girl unconscious under one of the pews. And he didn't know what it was about, but got her out and got a doctor along. And they discovered she was overdosed and they did what they could. But, he, you know, what astonished him in that s simple process was the fact that uh, there were no uh, specialist services uh, that dealt with, um, you know, over overdoses. Ted's response to all this was to set up, for the first time in Australia, a drug referral scheme and rehabilitation centres. We've created a pad situation at the drug referral centre in which we have Dr Howard Peake, uh, you might say, as the head of the pad. I've shot up half a grain of H, you know, that's the first hit of H. Nothing, no dangers, you know, most people, you have a hit of H and you're dead within three years. He conducted them on a huge scale at the wayside. He called it Question Time. Now, the Question Time is an arena where the Buddhist, the Muslim, the anarchist, the humanist, all of these people are able uh, to come together and, in a dialogue, discover their common humanity. Ted's wayside chapel was truly revolutionary for its time. But his radical views on established religion would mire him in bitter controversy and push him to the limit.